I wanted to start off this video by saying welcome to my channel, but I also wanted to start off by saying congratulations. This is huge. You're gonna have a baby or many babies and you need to sort out your hospital bag. Well, I have finally packed my hospital bag at 35 weeks pregnant. It's something that has been on my mind for a little while. Now, you may be the same as me. I mean, some people are quite apprehensive about packing a hospital bag because you think, what do I put in my bag? Well, this is baby number five for me. So I've had a little bit of practice <laughs> at packing hospital bags and I'm realizing what I do and I really do not need. So in this video, I will show you everything that I feel like I need for one baby um, to be born at hospital. Now, my first baby was a vaginal birth. Then I had twins, which were an elective cesarean. Then I had another baby, which was an emergency cesarean after trying for a VBAC. And this baby, I am trying for a VBAC again. So I'm kind of packing for every eventuality, I guess, just in case I end up having a cesarean again. I feel like I have covered most bases for myself to go into hospital to have the baby. So I have got my hospital bag, the baby's hospital bag, and my partner, Reese, um, a bag with bits and bobs for him as well. Um, so yeah, let's start off with my hospital bag, which is this cute pink bag that I got from Amazon back when I had my last baby, baby George, who is now 19 months old. I'm pretty sure they still sell this bag on Amazon. So I will link that in the description box below. In fact, let's start off by saying everything that I possibly can link, I will link in my description box in case you wanted to go and get something similar or that particular thing. I mean, some of these things have been really handy to me. So here we go. I usually overpack. Now, if I go away somewhere for the weekend, I usually pack for a week. But going into a hospital, the space is quite limited. So I have really narrowed down on things that I will need. I have literally packed things that I will just need and some little comforts and stuff, but nothing too bulky and too garish because you've got to lug it all around. It has to be around you. And then you're going to have doctors, midwives, um, just people generally trying to help you during your labor. And then you're gonna have another person there as well. So you're gonna need as much room as possible. So don't take too much stuff is what I'll say. And I'll also say, if you are driving and you are gonna park your car nearby or in a hospital car park, you can always leave things in there. You can always have extra things in there, which you can go back to and just grab whenever you need. So my hospital bag. Oh. Here it is. Okay, let's dive in to my bag. What I have done with my last, my three pregnancies. So this pregnancy, my last pregnancy and the pregnancy before, to be honest, I didn't even think about this with my first pregnancy, which is my eldest daughter, Summer, who is, she's 17 and a half. So it was a long time ago that I had her. And I only started doing this with my recent pregnancies, which is buying bags or you can get packing cubes from Amazon and putting things into those bags to separate things and make life so much easier when you're diving into your bag trying to find things. It's not just great for hospital bags, it's also great for if you wanna go on holiday. Here's me saying, you know, this is baby number five and I feel like I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. This is one of them. In my hospital bag, I have kind of split it into two sections. So one section here, one section here. It's kind of the before and after. So I've got a bag which I can just pull out and this is my labor bag. So I can forget about the rest of that bag for now because in this bag is things I'm gonna need specifically for 
labour. This is my labour bag. It's just a big Ziploc bag from Amazon. I just bought it in a big pack of different sizes. They're very, very, very handy. Right, so I have... <laughs> There are so many different types of ways you can labour or choose to labour or have your baby. I am planning for a V-back, but there are things on my mind which I've been thinking about, like, do I want to get in the pool? So, I have packed myself my maternity swimming costume. Here it is. Just in case I choose to get into the pool. Now, I really don't know how things are going to go, obviously, don't have a great big crystal ball, but there might be a possibility which I think, do you know, I actually, I think I would get into the pool because it might help with you know, labour pains. <laughs> so I've packed a swimming costume. I don't actually intend on birthing in the pool, that is why it is a costume rather than a two-piece set. So. Yep, one swimming costume is in my labour bag. I bought this when I had George, my last. It is a handheld fan and it also comes with an attachment where you can put some water so you can spray that at yourself as well. I use it just as a fan. It has three settings and, oop, and a battery which you can actually charge. But this, three settings is amazing and also hang on let me turn it off also you can bend it and you can have it sat on a table so it's facing you or you can just hold it but this is amazing i highly recommend getting a fan because it gets very hot in labor very hot in the labor room depends what time of year i mean we are in september right now so it's still quite warm my baby is due early october so here in the UK, the temperature fluctuates all over the place at the moment. But I remember George was born in January and I was so, so hot and this was amazing. So yeah, swimming costume and a hospital fan. This is a gorgeous, cute little bag, which I was given alongside a bigger hospital bag by a company called something a little bit different. And I will link them in the description as well they're amazing they do these gorgeous canvas bags but i've saved that bag for the baby so i will show you that in a minute this is a detachable bag which was pop it inside but i'm using this one for myself in here a little bits and pieces which i feel will help me during my labor i have an eye mask Sometimes the rooms can get quite bright and you just want to shut off and try and relax, especially if you're listening to music or you're into hypnobirthing or you're just having a massage and you just want to just relax. Uh, an eye mask is a fantastic way of doing that. So that is in my little tiny, it's almost like a cosmetics type of thing, but it's not cosmetics. So in there I have an eye mask. I have a little pot of massage oil. This is just olive oil, which I've just decanted into a pot. If you've been practicing massage techniques, maybe with your birthing partner, don't forget your massage oil. Also just having a lower back rub during your contractions is a great way to help with pain relief. So I'm planning on getting Reese to do this to me. And I'm pretty sure actually the midwives know how to how to do it so they can show him how to do that so yeah just a little pot of olive oil my expert midwife do a fantastic range of products for birth and after birth now this one is the spritz for labor this helps you relax you can use it before you go into labor to help you start relaxing and then during your labor and your birth time just use this to sp spray it about give it a good sniff and that should really help you relax. I haven't actually opened it yet. I've, I've got it the other day and I'm only 35 weeks pregnant. So I think maybe in a week or so, I will just start spraying it in the air, giving it a good sniff and using it at a time that I do relax as well. So when it comes to the crunch and I'll be spraying it, it should help <laughs> remind myself that there are calm times. And I've just read, it says on here, 
that this spritz will help keep you calm, focused and grounded in pregnancy and during labour. So yeah, lovely little thing here. Oh, I put this in the wrong bit. This is my, my nipple cream because I plan on breastfeeding, but do you know, I actually think that I could just keep it in my little labour bag at the moment. My last baby had tongue tie, so I was getting a little bit sore trying to get him to latch on and this works lovely. You don't need to wipe it off. It's safe for baby, so yeah, this one's really, really good. I also have some hair bands because, you know, I might not want my hair all stuck all over my face, so I've got some hair bands in here and a lip balm. Your lips can get very dry and cracked, especially with all the heavy breathing and just general constantly being active, especially if you're in labour for a long time, you might get really, really tired and all that breathing and talking and everything, just lip, balm, just lip balm. This one was gifted to me from something a little bit different as well. Okay, so that is just my little bag of little essential things which I plan on using during my labour. So that's in there. Also in my big old bag, I have a book. I don't know how long I'm gonna be in labour for, um, so I would like to be able to take my mind off of things, take it off of the pain, do something which I enjoy doing. So Reese had got me this manifesting word search book, which I love manifestation anyway, and this word search book will help me focus on something else, and hopefully the words in here will help me as well. So we all know labour is hard work, hence why it's called labour. So you're going to need to keep yourself energised. I have bought myself some bits of, I've got some drinks. So I've got two bottles of Lucasade. I've got a big pack of um, smooth orange juice. Now I've got these ones because they come with straws. So I don't need to worry about tipping a drink up. I can just literally drink from a straw. I did this with my last labour with George. It was so handy to just have a carton right next to me with a straw. It's not gonna spill everywhere. Everybody needs sweets. These are vegan if you are a vegan or vegetarian. I'm actually a vegetarian, so this is great. I have got some bars, some energy bars, some OT bars. So I've got a couple of bars of Jordan's blueberry bars. I have then got some protein bars. So I've got peanut and chocolate, these ones. And then some more OT bars. I've got Nature Valley's Crunchy, two different flavors. These are just things so I can just snack on so I don't get too hungry because they do say to try and eat if you can. And that is the end of my labor bag. I plan on wearing one of their hospital gown thingies when I am laboring and giving birth. They're really good, especially if you're gonna have an epidural as well. They do up at the back so they can just easy access to your back. I should also say that I do have a pen which is in the side of my hospital bag so I know where it is. But I haven't put it in my labor bag or my labor compartment bit just because the side of my bag is so much easier to find the pen than this big old bag here. Also, I've just got these to walk around in. I actually got these from the spa. I feel like a bit of a cheapskate saying that, but yeah, I did. I got these from the spa. You can get them anywhere. They're just, I mean, they say, oh, take a pair of slippers, but I thought I'll just take these. So these go in my labor bag as well. Okay, right, so, after birth, I'm gonna need to try and look after myself. So I have bought a big old pack of maternity towels. I know that they do have them at the hospital, but I also know that they do like it if you bring your own. So this literally costs like a couple of pounds. It's not expensive at all. There's 20 in there. So it's a big old pack and because I plan on breastfeeding and also your boobs are going to start leaking anyway. In here I have put probably about eight pairs of breast pads for when your milk starts coming in. 
just in a Ziploc bag just to try and keep them all fresh. And I've also put a, one pair of disposable knickers in there for straight after birth. I don't know if I'm gonna use them or not. I, I'm not sure, but I've packed one just in case. So I have some maternity towels and then I have some breast pads and a, pa a pair of disposable knickers. So this bag comes with a couple of side pockets inside. These go in one of the side pockets and in the other one I have put my toiletries in here. Okay, so I got this really cute toiletry set from Amazon. It has so much in it. I didn't need half of it for my hospital visit if I was going on holiday for a longer period of time then I probably would need all those things. These are great. There's lots of stickers that you can just peel off and put on the containers that they come in. I have just taken a few of them out. These are all silicone as well, they're absolutely fantastic. So this is one that I've labeled saying shampoo. Then I have a conditioner one and one for shower gel. Tiny little, well they're not tiny, but they're squeezy as well. So you can get your products out pretty easy. And also, oh, I haven't actually put it in yet. It's my pot. This is for my face cleanser. <laughs> I need to put it in there, just a little pot of face cleanser. And I've also put a little face, little face cleanser pad as well. It's amazing, isn't it? What you can fit into a tiny little Ziploc bag. So I've got all of that. Plus I've got my toothbrush. I've got a very small toothpaste. And once again, some more hairbands because I'm likely to just start losing them. I know myself, so I've just put hairbands in different places. A small face cream. I use the simple one because my face is quite sensitive at the moment. I've also got a little soap which come with the bag that I was gifted, along with two sachets. One which is a body wash and one which is a conditioning shampoo. Just in case I needed any extra things, I've just grabbed them and put them in here as well. So that is my toiletries bag. These are so, so handy. I love the fact that they're silicone. I remember back in the day and they used to just be hard plastic bottles and you could never get anything out and you'd be shaking it about. But yeah, this is just a squeezy one. So really easy to get the products out. And then that just moves on to clothing. I have packed in another little pack um, some big pants because you're going to need big pants to hold your maternity pads in. And also if you do have a cesarean, you don't want anything pushing on your scar. So if you have a pair of big pants, they usually come up so much higher so then everything is all tucked inside so you don't rub your, your scar, your bandages that they'll put on you. So in here I've got five pairs of big pants, some socks and a, well it's a sleep bra, but I used these before in my previous pregnancy. They are so comfortable, so you can sleep in them and they are also great for breastfeeding because you can just pop down the side. You can easily attach a breast pad inside and change them really, really quickly. This one's from Medella. I got it on Amazon as well. So that's like my little underwear pack. I also have a nursing bra as well for when I go home. Once I've had the baby and I'm out of my hospital gown, I plan on putting on. So I've got a couple of t-shirts here. I've got this big, dark one. I've got a dark colour because of the obvious after I've had the baby. So I just want to wear a nice comfy t-shirt and I have got some yoga, they're called yoga, I'm pretty sure they're called yoga maternity shorts. But I don't wear them for yoga, I wear them in bed because they are so, so comfortable. So they are going to be coming with me in my hospital bag, but they're not in my hospital bag right now because I have been using them recently. And I've also got a big, long t-shirt. And I've got this one from H&M. It's not a night shirt or anything. It's just a big, oversized t-shirt. 
And then I have a couple of items to go home in. Nothing special, just a pair of maternity leggings and a, oops, these have been so handy. I've put this in my hospital bag because I'm going to wear this home. This is a feeding top. Um, it comes unclipped. That's just what I'm gonna wear home and I'll probably grab some kind of sweatshirt or something when I'm leaving. So I will take that, wear that home with me. Nothing fancy, you don't need to go overboard with clothes and things like that. You really don't need to. And if you do get everything all messy and gross, then the hospital do have some gowns and stuff for you to wear until you get something from home that your birthing partner or somebody could bring in for you. So please don't panic and please don't think you have to overpack because space is tight in your hospital bag anyway. You could take a dressing gown if you wanted to. I've opted for this long cardi. I wore it when I had George. It is so, so handy. It doesn't have any buttons or anything. It's just, oh, let me undo this. It's just an open throw over cardi so I can feel a little bit more, I don't know, what's the word? You know what I mean, whilst I'm wandering around on the labor ward or on the after bit ward. And I've also got a big bag. This is a bin liner. Um, for the kitchen bin. This is to put all of my dirty clothes because I don't want it all getting all mixed up in here with my clean stuff. So little tip to take a bag to put your dirty bits and pieces in. I have not packed loads of stuff, just essential things which I am going to need. Also, this is pretty essential. I've packed myself some tea bags and some biscuits which I really love for after I've had the baby as a nice little treat to myself. Tea and biscuits. Now I've got these tea bags because I am an Earl Grey drinker and when I was at the hospital last time, I actually know with my twins, they asked if I wanted a cup of tea. I asked them if they had Earl Grey and the midwife just laughed at me. So I take my own tea bags with me. And these are in the outside pocket of my bag. So it's just really easy to get to. And these aren't in the outside pocket. They're just slightly inside. Things that aren't in my hospital bag are, I've taken some of the maternity towels, maternity pads out of the packet and put it into a Ziploc bag because if I, if my waters break before I go to the hospital, I'm going to need to protect myself, my clothing and everything that I sit on from getting soaked. So I have put some maternity towels in here and they literally just sit on the top of my hospital bag. Alongside my phone charger, I'm not gonna forget my phone charger, but I'm also not going to pack it just yet. It sits on top of my bag. So when the time comes, I can just push it into my bag. My phone is always on me anyway. I will probably be taking a small bag with me, like a, like a handbag, you know, like my hand luggage where I have my hairbrush in there and things like my bank card. Don't forget change if you have to pay for parking in your hospital car park. I mean, sometimes you can just do it on your phone, but some places still make you um, use cash and something else very important which sits on top of my hospital bag is my maternity notes do not forget these these are so important and your birth plan as well if you have written one don't forget to take that too that is me done next we're going to be looking at the baby's things moving on to the main person in this story the little person's hospital bag so I was kindly gifted this bag from something a bit different. They're on Instagram if you wanna go check them out. They make hospital bags for mums and babies. I think they do other things as well, like bridesmaids and brides-to-be bags. This bag is absolutely gorgeous. It's a lovely canvas bag. And what I like about it is, it's got the main section here. You also have another zip compartment down here for other bits and bobs. So it's really, really, really good. So yeah, go check them out. They are so, so sweet these bags so i decided to use this one for the baby so let's have a look in the baby's bag i love packed packed things i love packing packed things <laughs> so i think i said this i'm pretty sure i said this during my 
bag showing but um, I like to use little bags to put everything in so just to you know separate everything so what I've done with the baby clothes is I have done exactly the same thing I've got lots of these little bags from Amazon or you can use packing cubes they come in all different sizes just to make my life so much easier. In fact, just to make Reese's life so much easier as well because you've just had your baby and you're laying there and you're like, can you get me a um, bodysuit or a vest, whatever you call them, and a baby grow, or you might call them a onesie and they're going, what, what, where's that? Which bag's that in? So, oh, in a particular size. So what I've done is I have put Actually, me saying that makes Reese sound like he doesn't know what he's doing. He does know what he's doing. I mean, this is his fourth baby. He's well aware of what a bodysuit and a baby grow is, but some people don't know, and it's quite hard. It's, it's more for the sizes, really. It's more for the sizes. So what I've done is I have packed three different sizes for the baby. I've packed newborn, which is seven and a half pounds. I've packed up to one month which is usually about nine to ten pounds and then I have packed not three months just in case this baby is really big or really really long when I had George the clothes that I'd packed for him I'd packed newborn things didn't fit him and he actually needed a bigger size and Reese had to bring some more stuff in from home so this time I'm becoming more and more and more prepared so every child that I have become that little bit more prepared so let me show you what I've done here. Right, I have got three packed bags. This one is newborn. Inside here is four bodysuits or vests and four baby grows or sleep suits, you might call them. So there is plenty in there for a day. And then I have the next size up of first size or up to one month, which is about nine pounds. Same thing again, four vests, bodysuits, four baby grows. And then the next size, not to three months, I have got two bodysuits or vests and two baby grows. Don't know if I'm going to need the bigger size. It's more of a just in case. So I didn't want to overdo it. So that's three different clothing size bags. And then I have another bag. So this bag has things like little knitted cardies in. I've got two knitted cardies. It shouldn't be cold on the hospital ward, but just in case. And inside, yeah, so I've got two cardies. My mum's knitted these, so I absolutely love knitted clothes. And my mum, bless her, she's knitted these cardies. So I've got two of those. A couple of hats, they're different sizes, because who knows what size the baby's head's gonna be two pairs of socks and two pairs of scratch mitts. Now, all of the baby grows, which I've got, all have the scratch mitts attached, but sometimes they like to suck their hands, so they'll just get all wet. So these are some backup scratch mitts if you didn't want to change the entire outfit. Also got some booties. This is more for going home, I'd say. So there's some here and then a slightly bigger pair here and these are these actually come in the bag from something a bit different aren't they adorable and you may wish to take one of these with you as well these are great for announcing the baby's been born and then on that side you can just fill in all the information this also comes in the gift bag so just the hat in another one of these packing bags, I have packed some muslins. So I have packed four muslins, and then this comes in the gift bag as well. It is a beautiful muslin shawl wrap blanket. It's so big and it's so, so soft. You can wrap your baby up in it, keep it nice and snugly and close to you. But yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. So this is, I guess, Muslin number five, but it's so big, I won't use it as like a muslin or a burping cloth or anything. I think I'm just gonna use it to wrap baby in. And also a good thing to have is a blanket. The hospitals usually do provide you with blankets, but you may wish to bring your own, or you may wish to bring a blanket to wrap 
your baby up in when you go home as well. This one is beautiful. This was kindly gifted to me as well and it's a lovely ooh, big knitted blanket and it feels gorgeous as well. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that is what's in the main part of the bag. In the bottom part of the bag, there is some zips here. So in the bottom part is where I've put my nappies and wipes. So even though the hospital do have some nappies, they do usually like it if you take some as well. So I have got a pack of new baby newborn nappies these are size one don't think the baby is going to need anything smaller than this so this is a size one and there are 22 nappies in here so i think that will be more than i need i've gone for a pack of water wipes we've always used this brand with our children they are the purest wipes you can get and they are actually the wettest wet wipes I've ever come across. They're absolutely brilliant. So yeah, some water wipes. I actually buy these from Amazon, but um, as a monthly subscription makes it so much cheaper each month. They come each month and I don't even have to think about it. It's just constantly reordered. So we always have a delivery of water wipes to our door. I've got a small pot of Sudocreme great for nappy rash. I am planning on breastfeeding this baby but as we all know not everything always goes to plan so I have got myself a backup plan. I've got some ready-made infant milk formula which is in a bottle ready-made. It's all sterilized you don't have to sterilize anything it's all ready to go you just take it out and feed your baby. I think there is yeah there's six in here so while I am trying to breastfeed or hoping that my milk will start and the, just in case you know the baby is really hungry I have some backup milk to feed the baby with so yeah six of these and that fits in nicely at the bottom of this bag. You may choose to have um, a coming home outfit for your baby also depending on what time of the year it is you may need warmer clothes maybe like a little like a pram suit or something like that it all depends on how you intend on getting your baby home as well if you're driving a car you have to have a car seat so make sure you've taken that out of its box and you can figure out how to use it because there's nothing more frustrating than trying to figure out how to use a car seat or attach one in your car when you want to either pick up your baby or you're thinking okay well, i want to take this with me when you're in labor Get it all sorted ready. Just fit it into your car so it is ready to roll and you don't have to think about it and then learn how to tighten and loosen the straps as well because that can be quite fiddly. I've also got a small hand sanitizer that I'll take with me as well, but that is in my handbag. So that'll just come with me that way. Okay, and the last person that I've been packing for is my partner, Reese. Now, you don't know how long you're gonna be in labor for or in the hospital for or anything like that. so your partner is going to be there with you at the same time. So they are gonna need some supplies as well. So for Reese, I've packed a clean t-shirt, some underwear. He's going to need to take his toiletries with him, which I have his bag, but I don't have all the bits and bobs because he's still using them at the moment. Also his phone charger, he's gonna need that and some change for the car park. And then there's gonna be snacks and things to keep him going as well. He has got very similar to what I have got. Apart from he likes apple juice, so I have bought him just, it's only three cartons of apple juice. And, whoops, some protein bars, couple of these. And because I love him, some jammy dodges. Also, this is, something that we found out every time we go to the hospital in the uk the nhs don't usually give cups of teas out to the dads so what i've done is i have packed reese a bag of tea bags as well because i'm pretty sure they can give you just some boiled water and then you can just put your own tea bags in that so yeah i've got a little bag here of about 10 tea bags which he can have with his jammy dodgers Okay, some extra little bits and bobs which you might find useful, a V-pillow. I will be taking my V-pillow with me 
I took it with me when I had George. I'm so glad I did. It was great for when I was in labor and also breastfeeding afterwards, something for him to be able to lay on. It was just so comfy and it was so nice just to have something from home as well that I could have wrapped around me. Also, if you're taking a car, take a spare pillow as well for yourself and for your birth partner as well because if they're there for a long period of time, they may get to lie down and the hospitals don't always have lots of pillows to hand out to everybody. So if you had your own one, that would really help them. And also it does make you feel so much cozier when you have a nice squishy pillow from home. If there are other things you want to take, like things to do with your work, obviously don't forget to take that. I'll be taking my laptop with me and maybe my vlogging equipment. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to vlog this birth, but I'll take it with me just in case. There's no harm in packing extra things that's going to stay in your car as well. Like uh, you might want to take your birthing ball. I certainly did take my birthing ball when I had George, my last baby. I remember bouncing around in the hospital with it. I've bought another birthing ball which I've been using and I will probably take that with me as well. The only thing is I'd have to let it down or let some of the air out and then remember to take the pump with me but I'm pretty sure hospitals would let you use their birthing ball. But yeah anything that you can think of which you think that you might need just put in your car like the car seat make sure that's in there ready. Extra pillows, extra clothes, even extra nappies. There's no harm with keeping an extra pack of nappies in your boot just in case you need it. Well that's pretty much it. That is my hospital bag. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did give me a great big thumbs up and it won't be long until my little one is here. If you think, oh, Rebecca, you've missed something, comment in the comment section below so I can have a little look and everyone else can have a look as well, just in case I have missed something huge and I'm thinking, I should have packed that. I know there's one thing that I've ordered and it hasn't arrived yet. It should have been here today. And that is the My Expert Midwife Spritz for Bits. Now, it is kind of what it sounds like. Spritz for, you know, your bits. So it's supposed to help after you've had your baby. I will link that as well. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you would subscribe and join me for the rest of my pregnancy and all the other videos that I'm going to be releasing as well. If you're pregnant at the same time as me, eek, it's not long left now, is it? Literally any week because term is 37, full term is at 40. We are getting really close. So if you haven't packed your hospital bag yet, better crack on and do it. 35 weeks is usually a really good time to have your bag ready. So I'm so glad I have got mine already. It's taken the pressure off me massively now. But anyway, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a great big thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.